Welcome to Happily Ever Aftermath, the podcast where we discuss relationships in movies and our relationships with them. I'm Polina Grinbaum. And I'm Diana Rojek Sconner. Hello, Diana. Hey, Polina, what's up? Not much. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for asking. Did you make all your train connections today? I did make them and interestingly enough i was looking at my app and it was telling me i had 14 more seconds to get on the train and we were already moving man that's technology now it is technology now yeah and uh for all of this uh hot train talk we're talking right mm-hmm. now at the very least let's very casually slide into huh oh. Oh, what a, yeah that was terrible anyways we're talking about sliding doors <laughs> <laughs> the uh 1998 fantasy comedy according to fantasy this fantasy comedy according to this I guess maybe are all romantic comedies fantasy comedies not necessarily that's very true i mean unless you think about how much money they make all the time yeah. <laughs> and the homes that they own yeah anyways um okay so sliding doors when helen Gwyneth Paltrow, a london ad executive is fired from her job and rushes rushes out to catch a train two scenarios take place in one, she gets on the train and comes home to find her boyfriend, Jerry, John Lynch, mm-hmm. in bed with another woman. In the second, she misses the train and arrives after the woman has left. In the first scenario, Helen dumps Jerry, finds a new man, and gradually improves her life. In the second, she becomes suspicious of Jerry's fidelity and grows miserable. This is the Google search results, and I would like to give a particular shout out to said woman she finds with jerry gene triplehorn Mm -hmm. yes and the guy she finds the new man john hannah who is uh has a very special place in my heart i cannot wait to hear more about it that's it (laughs) (laughs) and i did there it is right there gene triplehorn has a has a very special place in my heart i i really like another movie that she's in she find her delightful which movie uh till there was you I don't think I saw that, but now I want to. It's um, it's it's funny because it was a Jennifer Aniston movie. With that, of course, after Friends blew up, it's like Jennifer Aniston oh, and yes. also Jane Triplehorn and Roger Dodder and Dylan McDermott and there's mm. other people in this movie. I'm like, no, this movie is about never. Oh, it's also um, a very fun scenario as well where the main couple keeps crossing paths in so many different ways, mm-hmm. but they never directly meet. But they're like perfect for one another. Oh. Like the piano that she owns that has been in their family for generations was carved by his grandfather. Oh. And the building that she's trying to, you know, that she lives in, that she's trying to save. He's the architect of the people who want to tear it down. And the girl that he's dating at the time, she's a ghostwriter for her. Wow. And it's just it's really interesting. And she believes in like there's going to be a magical moment where they're going to meet. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll put it on. It's already on the list. Yeah. It's just. Let's get it on the just, list. Okay. I want an excuse to, to watch it. All right. So that's my excuse. Okay. Well, then it's going to probably disappoint you. Anyways. But that's. <laughs> that's what we do. That's what we do. Well, here's my question yeah. for you then. I saw this, you know, late 90s. Did when you it see it in the theater? Out. No, not in the theater. Uh, definitely a, I'm, I'm imagining a bl- mm-hmm. blockbuster mm. plastic VHS Blue. case. Not Little DVD. yellow accents. VHS, uh, that's what my next question. Yeah. What format? It was a VHS thing. Oh, um, wow. You yourself mentioned that you had not seen this. I had not, and I think it's just, in. it falls into that realm of movies around this time where I didn't have a ton of cash to spend on movies, so ah. I probably, I, I saw a lot of movies, but I was pretty careful with mm-hmm. those, with what I saw. Yep. Um, and I think this just didn't really make the, like... You know, that that particular cut. But it is a movie, like, I was very familiar with it. I'm very familiar with the idea. It's one of those movies, like, I, I'm kind of surprised that I have not seen. It mm-hmm. just sort of, like, wasn't, you know, wasn't high on my list at the time. Um, so That's- my I came into it with all of everyone's kind of, ide- excuse me, ideas about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so uh, I... And I knew it has Gwyneth Paltrow, and I have to say, this one thing that this movie, I, I'm, I, I'm compl- I am not, I am not at all immune to Gwyneth Paltrow's charms. Oh. Every time I see, like I, I, 
You know, the only time I read, like, read Goop is to, like, make fun of it. I huh. am a total hate reader of Goop. I loved that. I don't know if you've ever read. There's this amazing New York Times um, magazine article or this woman. Um, uh, is it Gwyneth Paltrow? It interviews Gwyneth Paltrow okay. about Goop, and it's so fantastic, um, just the way that she writes about it. And I will, uh, I'll, I'll. We'll link it in the show notes. But um, I have to say, I just, and, and during this time, especially because this is going to be for the Gwyneth Paltrow of like goop and lifestyle and craziness. Conscious um, uncoupling. And conscious uncoupling. Was it before or after she named her child Apple? It was way before. Mm-hmm. It was in the, during this. I, I was like, she was just kind of an it girl. And I, I can't stop looking. I just, every time she smiled in this movie, I... My heart grew like three sizes bigger <laughs> and it just made everything okay. Which is so strange because when you were starting that sentence, she's like, you're not immune to her charm. So I'm like, oh, I thought you were going to I'm say. I'm not, not yet. I thought unimmune. you were going to say the exact opposite yeah. of that. I was like, I was like, there's got to be a way to say this without a double negative, but I couldn't find it. Well, I, I, I personally saw this when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Um, it was very likely before I ever saw the movie seven. So that really matters. And I mm-hmm. believe at the time there was this whole like engaged to Brad Pitt thing. Well, that's where the they other were the thing. It couple. I mean, she's like, and then, you know, she's even, living the dream, man. Well, she was living a dream and then that dream ended and then she ended up living a different dream. And then there's this other dream that she kept living that even when she was like getting divorced. Oh yeah. She's, I mean, conscious uncoupling sounds amazing. It, it oh, okay. I'm gonna I be mean, able- doesn't it? Like, I mean, if you're going to have to get a divorce anyway, like, you don't you want like to do it and, and have a happy marriage? Well, no, I'm gonna sit over here and work mm-hmm. on my thought leadership. Oh, okay, and, yeah, uh, <laughs> other various words that come yeah. out when I'm just like, uh, I don't know how I feel about this, but I also don't want to phrase, no, I just, but don't, anyway, I just but this is care. before then. This well, is, yeah, this I, is what's beautiful about it, right? But I watching it now, mm-hmm. like, at the time, I was very into the movie itself but i'll show you how much i was into it yeah, when, I, when we get into I, it I more. so many questions well calm down <laughs> calm down because i i remember this being part of my man i love john hannah okay ness and I and i thought he was really cool but access to all of his stuff like if you really really like somebody now you hop onto imdb mm-hmm. you google search them you manage to find all of these you know images of them that you can you know print and put on your wall i'm really dating myself right now okay fine make your wallpaper on your device well this is the whole point is you it's yeah like you had to print i mean you had to for the record i did not print find these things at the uh, yeah if you really wanted to do that and you you had to like track down the magazine yeah that's that's and like maybe you would find stuff i mean it was 1998 you could find stuff on the internet and then print it in your home in your office after hours so your boss wasn't i was on ebay a lot in 1998 oh yeah and i think my best friend aaron had just introduced me to imdb and i'm like (gasps) yep this is like information i that i want yes in order chronologically i mean yeah i and i I mean, 1998, I had internet at home and I had a computer, but my phone, your own I had my own computer because of work. Oh. I was working. Um, oh, that's right. You're older than me. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So you keep reminding me much. Um, but well, yes, no. I was, I, if I was obsessed with Johnny, <laughs> I would have, I would have gone into my office because we had much faster internet. I would have like painstakingly downloaded you know, some photos of him. Okay. Now don't continue the story because I'm very afraid of where this is going right now. (laughs) Oh, good. And, and hey, hey, now let's Mm -hmm. pull back the word obsession because I I was going through a, a, an appreciation phase Mm -hmm. because my, sorry, my, I I would only do that if I was obsessed and not appreciative. That's well, again, a lot in, in these, these very precious years of mine, Mm -hmm. mine usually just goes, I love that guy. Mm -hmm. And then there's, I love that guy talent crush and Mm -hmm. i love that guy like attractive guy can you just keep talking to me yeah because the things you say are fun and i loved his quotes in Um, the movie yeah where he's so you like really like the script i don't know if i would say that i liked the script because looking back it's not shakespeare-esque but it's very he's he's got great delivery yeah no he does a really excellent delivery um, so I was a fan of that. And then also we will talk about this movie on the show eventually. 
Ryan has already volunteered himself to be on this episode. Okay, but cool. I love the mummy. And he plays the brother. Nice. And so of course of course he's all conniving, but that's what you do when you're, you know, John Hanna in the mummy? I don't know. No, he's great. I mean, I get like, mm-hmm. yes, it's he's he's exactly the kind of and certainly, even you know, at the advanced age I was at nine, in nineteen ninety eight, I uh, I think if I saw this movie, I would have like I I mean I really like John Hanna, mm-hmm. but I think I I he's sort of in this movie kind of he is the perfect guy. He's very funny. He's super mm-hmm. supportive. Mm-hmm. Um, he's sweet to his mom. Um, yep. Yeah, and he's yeah, like the 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 charm and the delivery, and you know, money. I mean, I'm sorry, like I, I'm a woman of a certain age. Money Py- people quoting Money Python, though they do it all the time, still gets me. <laughs> spent though I've spent many hours of my life that I will never get back just volleying Money Python quotes, uh-huh. volleying Money Python quotes, yep. or rather, many hours my employers will mm. never get back. Okay, um, I uh, I got just shamed because i didn't recognize police academy quotes uh uh-huh yeah that's oh yeah yeah god the shame i've had a hard life you have had a hard life okay not really at all (laughs) so for those of you who are not that familiar with the movie and who also kind of passed out when i did the description Mm -hmm. uh (laughs) one of the things that's kind of important is and if you did please call 911 you should not be passing out well well, no like unconsciousness not Uh in in, in a pleasant way oh like spacing out yes okay good yes um what i think is really important and this just goes to show you how much i've changed since Mm -hmm. i saw this movie way back in the late 90s watching gwyneth paltrow run for the train Mm -hmm. and whether or not she gets the train or she doesn't get the train i am now a train commuter Mm -hmm. so i know this pain yes um i also have like a little bit of realism is that she's fired from her job so there wouldn't be that big of a crowd so her running through and actually trying to catch the train the train excuse me Mm -hmm. is believable however never use your arm to force the door open oh my god i can't yes we that. cannot stress this enough i i was that person i understand educate yourself people mm-hmm. this is not just like do not the door is obstructed and i'm just like you are gonna be and the reason i just want to remind them mm. it's london there is a a well-publicized gap like watching that i found i knew what was going to happen but i found it terrifying that, that there was a gap to mind? No, but, like, that you're... I mean, it's one thing when, like, the train abuts the... Uh, but, like, like using your arm mm. and then losing your balance, mm. like, is much more... Is even more dangerous than if you have, like... You know, like, say, BART does not have a great deal of space no. between the yep. platform and the train. Mm-hmm. Not so true mm-hmm. in sp- stops in London. The th- well, the thing about it is, is that please don't be the reason that the door will make this entire train get out go out of commission mm-hmm. yes so. especially in um san francisco with the muni because we have those terrible doors that break all the time and are like the scourge of the underground muni underground i i'm just gonna say it for any everybody any everyone pu- you're right you're right you're public right public transportation there is no under no circumstances it's never okay i was that i did it with my niece there she looked at me like i was a a, a, a bad person and i said i, I don't care but but no right. she was right she was right i'm older and wiser also mm. she needs to move faster yes because i made it she oh god so you left your niece no 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 she <laughs> she she got on the train with me but what's okay, funny good. is that that look the look they mm-hmm. have as the train's pulling away she's on the train she made it she's not on the train she has that sad look I know that sad oh, that's look. feeling, and especially when you've had that kind of day where you're just like, I just want to go home. Everything is going wrong. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's and you're like, what's the next thing that's going to happen? Yeah, yeah. And so this is where the story splits. She, you know, as I mentioned, there's one scenario where she comes home because she caught the train, she caught it early enough. She finds her boyfriend, her living boyfriend, you know, having sex with another woman, and then on the other scenario, she actually gets mugged. And so, so there's delays on the trains. Um, they announce that. So she goes to find alternate ways home. Mm -hmm. She gets mugged. She has to go to the hospital, which is why she doesn't get home even faster because taking a cab would definitely get you home faster than the train. I would imagine. Depending on where you live. Yeah. Never mind. I mean, like I, 
like we but oh, I don't know, middle, last time I was wait, there. No, middle of the middle of the day so let's assume traffic well, it's not traffic though because i mean the whole thing about under like is is it's planned so that it's faster because oh. routes are underground that's not how it works here right? in northern california no it does it works in muni it's much faster to take an underground from the castro to market street than it is to drive that same distance yes even and, with Polina. no truck yes and oh i'm sorry yeah um in, if I may have a plug for uh, public plan for uh, no. you know transit planning, but no, that's no. not this podcast. No, Join me not. for my other podcast, Transit Minute. I am not part of this, this podcast. <laughs> I don't have podcast in Transit no. Minute. But let me get to the, my point here. She gets mm -hmm. she gets fired. She gets mugged. She goes to the hospital. The other scenario. And the other one, she gets fired, but she finds out her boyfriend's cheating on her. Which but in the other scenario, she doesn't know that he's cheating on her. So my question is, if you had to live one of those scenarios, would you rather be fired and cheated on that you're aware of or f fired, mugged, go to the hospital and not know you're cheated on? So I um, so one, this movie definitely points you in a single direction. And that is I've, her best life is is that she found out. I would rather know mm. because, OK, it's a bad time, mm -hmm. but the uh, the not knowing and living this like gas weird gaslighted life which is kind of what happened that goes up to 11 in this movie yes go on though yes yes like like she seems a ton smarter than that but whatever um well she gets there eventually yeah um i mean she she is kind of does she's like something doesn't add up but well, also, but there's other stuff happening and i kind of need to focus on those things also he's not brilliant no he's a horrible liar terrible but when you just got fired you're just like why is my boyfriend acting so odd yeah well oh, oh he's rubbing my back okay i'm happy again yeah exactly i mean you're sort of like i get like i totally get that mm -hmm. and also you're like why would i assume this mm -hmm. uh, yeah you're dealing with other things so i get it right. um yeah i would totally just want to know okay. that my because it's a terrible day. I'm gonna say it's like the worst day ever. You'd rather pick the this version of horrible. I mean, we're just talking about the day itself. Found out you got cheated on, got fired, got fired, you know, you got mugged, you went to the hospital. I really don't like going to the, I think I would, so if it's just for the day, yeah. I think I would go with the cheated on because I kind of feel like then, you know, there's a certain like, you get your, your friend, you're gonna, you're gonna you're gonna go to your friend's house it's terrible but you're not in a hospital and there's something about being mugged that i think i don't i like this friend but i think i like feel like there's a certain amount of like because the thing is she's gonna like she comes home from the hospital and she knows something's up mm -hmm. so it's not like she comes home from the hospital like everything's horrible and like everything's great and he does actually rally and like eventually he eventually rallies and tries to like just basically you see why she loved it but i kind of feel like well no as the you're... friend is just like seems a much cooler person and her apartment seems really cozy and comfortable <laughs> so um i'm gonna go with like yeah i'm gonna go with uh with with that i'm Wait. gonna go with the other and plus she gets like a killer haircut so I'm, eventually i bet you're right that's that's not the day well no that's not the day so, so you got there eventually. I want the big drama day, not the like, oh my God, I'm sitting in a waiting room day. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's... How about you? Oh, I would I would pick the good haircut. Oh, that's a smart move. Uh, no, I, would, I wouldn't get that haircut for myself. In fact, I was wondering, did Gwyneth Paltrow set the trend of having the bangs fall into your eyes and then pushing them back and then into your eyes and then pushing them no, back? No, no, that existed because I think I had that haircut before this. I mean, no, I didn't have that <laughs> haircut. I had a similar haircut. I've had similar haircuts to hers. Did not look that good as good in them. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you have like thin hair and uh, really adventure, but yeah, I, 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 there was a lot, I feel like there was also just, yeah, that was, it was definitely moving in that direction. There was a lot of, there was a lot of hair, hair, you know, hair covering one's eye and then flicking it back. I feel yeah. like, but she just, I mean, sometimes, you know, something is, exists and then someone just makes it like, you're like, yeah, this isn't a stupid idea. Hmm. Well, they, they have clips for that. Yeah, they do. I had a lot of clips, so I know I, I definitely. And then, yeah. You said you had questions. Yeah. You may have two. <laughs> One for each scenario wow. of this movie. Go. Oh, okay. Um, 
okay. Uh, when you saw it originally, mm -hmm. um, what was it that like? Because uh, you know you were you were at a slightly more tender age than I was. Uh, well, I didn't see it when I was when it came out. So, but when you were teen, like, what was about her? about the love story um, that grabbed you? Like, what was it that really stood out to you? Uh, let's see here. I mean, in terms of just, like, why did I come back for repeat viewings? Yes. Okay. Because I wouldn't say anything. I don't know why I watched this the first time. I have no idea. Could have been that thing of, like, the movie you want is not, you know, the typical blockbuster. Yeah. Uh, you know, no, I can, I can see that the happening. The typical Friday night... Uh, I do remember on occasion I would see the box that's in front of the rental box mm -hmm. where it's the the poster of her, it's her, and then the, the other her, so the brown-haired, long-haired her, and then mm -hmm. the that, and it would be upside down sometimes, and I'd have to fix it <laughs> because Cause, it's, cause it's wrong. It's, yeah, yeah, it is. Blonde, blonde goes on this, this I, way. I'm kind of with you. But I, I'm not entirely sure, but I will give you a, a more diana appropriate answer mm -hmm. i was not into the sad sack she doesn't know she's being cheated on storyline very much so Good. i didn't watch it very much that makes such sense i really fixated on it, it's kind of like watching love actually and i'm like no i don't like the storyline yeah and so i skip it i'm like oh good it's time for oh that makes me so happy that makes me really really happy for 15 year old diana because oh, I, I was like i hope starting? Yeah, well, just that you like chose the like the, more, the positive more positive one because, like, yeah, because like I don't know. Every time, every time she'd like flash back to having long hair, which is the sad sack um, one. I just, I just, I had that um, that you know, staring at the screen, kind of like wanting to like grab her and be like you know like like as the actress though i you know which i usually i know i like rail against this like they're mm -hmm. actors they are playing different people it's unfair for us to like put them in these boxes unless they put them in those boxes themselves like it's it's kind of it's it's disrespectful to their craft or whatever i something i should clarify though yeah. when i refer to that as the sad sack timeline yeah. though i'm referring to her boyfriend jerry because man that yeah guy. that's what i mean i know i know you're, you're supposed to not like him but i will tell you that the scenes involving him basically like bearing his soul to his best friend and his best friend mocking him those are great you're it's right fantastic so, so, i now. mean i mean really you you know now that you say that i realize because i was like i said i didn't the beginning of this movie i was like i was like okay uh, and then I was like, um, okay. And then actually like about, uh, I took a break. And then when I got back to it, I was like happy as a clam. Mm. I don't know. It was my mood, but I was just like happy as a clam watching this movie. But mm. the thing now that you say it, it's, it's, I think I turned it off before his friend mocks him because, Aww. because I think that otherwise you would just it would be it would it's it was kind of genius to put that in because you needed to be like i want to mock this man so much like why do these two amazing successful mm -hmm. like women were love this guy and he's like and also he's like like she loses her job and he's writing a book and she has two she's yeah. supporting herself with two she's jobs ma she's maintaining the entire lifestyle as if she still had her pr job and he's still writing his novel which he's not because he's, he's just like cheating he's yeah. having sex with gene triple horn mm -hmm. all day which is like i'm like well you know bully for you like that's awesome that's 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 certainly that would be fun that'd be a great way to, to to live life but i just just saying like there's no like guilt he never has a moment of like no he does it's just this strange thing tied up to where not enough to stop. I think to he's, do anything about I it. I think he's he's afraid of one and yes. and concerned for the, for other, the other. But yeah. he wants them both. I know. Yeah, it doesn't. They don't really. But regardless, like, yeah. But I agree with you with that. That the sad side. I just just like I was like I was like, why why is this happening to you, Greta? Um, like I just I really was like I was like don't worry your life is gonna be great. Um, and it was just kind of funny, um, I know. but it just made me sad. And mm -hmm. um, 
and I agree. I, I'm just, and then there wasn't enough John Hanna in that in that life, so that was he also was, sad. He was still there though. Yes, like when, I know you kept seeing him in little bits because they're trying to, you know, make a point that well, he would have been here anyways with his friend having a drink. Exactly. So he's there in the corner. Which when I saw his friend. Um, I refer to him as not Norm Macdonald because <laughs> oh he had the, God, you're, totally. he had the pointy face and I just wanted him to just sort of jump in and I thought it was pretty funny. But yeah. what, what's it's, really it, that, that, that is uh, Russell, correct? That's played by Douglas McFerrin. I don't know because my computer is not in front of me. OK. Yeah. But what's, my computer is in front of me. What's great is that in, in this scenario, like in, in, the, in the one where she meets James john mm-hmm. hannah uh, she starts you know spending time with him he's trying to be very respectful but he's also not being overly um not he is being persistent but he's also trying to be helpful at the yeah. same time yes and he even says you know the find that i find you moderately attractive yeah. is like just he, a bonus yeah yeah so he's like he's making his intentions known and it's just like yeah. It's, it's like if she said like no i think he would he would yeah, yeah. but also, i mean i feel like he handled it because like in general I had, I had a good male friend at, at one point in my life i was uh, that i was we're both going through kind of a hard time and we ended up we um I was living in new york at the time and we we hung out at the same bar a lot and we ended up in his apartment and he like made a pass at me and i was totally like oh my god no i have a, like a and he's like he's like that's fine try it we'll move on and be friends like mm. no big deal and yep. i was like you know, I was pretty young at the time, so I was like kind of angsty about it. And he was just like, "Okay, well, that's just not what's going to happen. Like, do you want like we're just going to hang out now?" Hmm. And I kind of felt that same vibe, like where he was like, "Hey, look, like if I get to be friends with you, great." Hmm. And I felt like it, he, yeah, that was very, I thought, w- like well played. Right. And I also love how like awkward she is. Yeah. Like she just like in real life, just like <laughs> just like in my teenage real life. Yeah, I'm like just like I am now. Yeah, um, yeah. She stutters. She kind of like mm-hmm. doesn't really know quite the right way to say it, which is a stare. Like, but you can tell that in her real, like in in her work, mm-hmm. she's you know they she's super on top of it because when she's at work, she knows exactly what to say. Except for when she's drawing little pictures of him in her yes. calendar. Yeah, that's just sweet. Yeah. I like that. There's this thing because he is a. He's on a rowing team yeah and he invites her out and they do that and it's really nice and what i think is really nice is that at the end of the evening you know he tries to kiss her and she's like no no no, no i'm so sorry and they have this like kind of you know conversation again it's the sense of humor mm-hmm. and I, i'm wondering if i just learned to buy into that at such a young age we want the guy with the sense of humor apparently he's probably pretty damn rich too because oh yeah yeah because yeah. he's got like his own company and and all this other yeah. stuff, but that that that's irrelevant. We're talking that's about not we're talking about the sense of humor. Well, I mean, it makes sense. No, no, in no, your just, family, no, just yeah. the sense of humor. No, no, okay, don't ruin it. All right, <laughs> I wasn't. I was. I was saying that it makes sense because your family, there's a lot of like not that. Rich. No, well, not the not rich part. I don't. Um, I uh, I'm saying like. It, in your family, like humor is really considered, um, much like in mine, is considered a really huge kind of currency. Mm-hmm. And so it makes sense that that's what you're looking for. Because right. that's what I was looking for. Well, so let's, gotta... look, well, let's see here. So pop culture references, check. Yes. Uh, sense of humor, check. Excellent uh, haircuts. Uh, self uh, deprecating humor as well. Mm. So one of the ones that I remembered, I'm just like, oh, that's going to be extra uncomfortable when I watch it again. But he. Helen is saying, I'm still getting over a breakup. He's like, no, 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 I understand. I'm getting, I'm getting one over two. In fact, mm-hmm. like the whole, my existence is centered around Pam and me breaking up. She's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. When was that? He's like, 1963, yeah, we, we were good. eight. Yeah. Yeah. It was and 19, yeah. I, I definitely got the, yeah. the, I got the year I wrong. It was but 73 or something. I remember because I was like, oh wait. <laughs> but the hard part is that she left him for Gary Glitter. And I'm like, that was such a great, that was such a great detail. At the time, yes. I mean, yeah, most guys are, are being left for David Cassidy or uh, who was the other one? I forget. Dang it. Dang my lack of uh, memory. But, but do you know the story behind Gary Glitter? Uh, yeah, it's coming back to me. Okay, so it's not cute anymore. No, you're right. Yeah. What doesn't help is that all of the uh, uh, 
things coming to light about Gary Glitter and yeah, his which I don't abuse know. of children. I don't know if that was even out at that point. It was out one year later. Oh. Hard. And oh. then I looked it up. Apparently it happened again in 2002 and then again in 2000 something else. And he oh. went to jail for 16 years and oh. it was really creepy. Okay. Now and then I'm, I'm almost like, sad. I'm glad I'm, I, I, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. But again, in the context I have of a terrible James, memory. Yeah, in the context of James, and at this time, mm -hmm. at this time, it was a great joke. It was a great joke, and it wasn't just him quoting Monty Python. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you okay. Have, you have one more question. I have one more question. Um, okay, so did uh, this is a question I ask a lot. Like, um, did anything change? Like, when you rewatched it, mm -hmm. I it seems like, you didn't change. I'm not letting you cheat. Um, you didn't really change the storyline that you liked. But do you have more? Um, do you have more empathy toward her? Like, like what kind of changed about their like your relationship to uh, both like John Hanna's character and also her? Still liked him. I thought it was great. I was paying more attention to the second storyline. Of course, I the had sad snack storyline as um, we refer to it. Sure, now. The, well, the brown, brown, brown hair, haired, brown long, hair long, long brown hair, long brown hair. Uh, well, if anything, I was paying more attention to Lydia Jean Triplehorn's character mm. because in the first th scenario, I was just like, you know, oh, we hate her, mm -hmm. but no, we hate Jerry. <laughs> I mean, she is aware that he is cheating on. Yeah, she Lydia is aware that. Jerry is cheating on her. She's fully aware of Helen's presence. In fact, she's she's nasty in yeah. that she wants to know that. In the teenage years, it's very easy to just be like, hate, hate this person, all these things. But, you know, understanding the, the subtler nuances of things. Mm -hmm. This woman is very upset and frustrated as well. And so she's just kind of going along with it. And then she finally makes her declaration of just like, you know, I've had enough of this. So I'm leaving and I, I have like a sympathy for her, but then in the, you know, the brown hair timeline, she actually manages to get Helen at her apartment when Jerry is there and saying, oh, good, I have a job interview for you, but I'm going to have to cancel it because I have to find out what I'm going to do because I'm pregnant with your boyfriend's baby. So that's just like, yeah, she's oh, very she, cruel. I mean, she, evil queen had happening and, right and now and almost worse because at least that one you're like okay i get that you you know you've been driven to insanity mm -hmm. i it's i don't condone it i don't think it's good behavior i but at least you're trying to call something to a head the one the the messed up one i thought is when she basically called she lied about her office being po food poisoned mm -hmm. um both bad just to humiliate without telling her mm -hmm. just to humiliate her right just for pleasure whereas like i feel like the second one though not cool nope. at all mm -hmm. is at least calling something to a head and it's you know, weird is also doing kind of her like is doing um helen a favor and uh, I mean, not a favor, but she's basically like, look, you, you know, mm -hmm. this like this guy has been cheating on you and gaslighting you mm -hmm. for a long time. But, but at the same time, though, there are there are there very, are better ways to do that. No, there are better days. Well, remember, she also was like standing on their balcony window and it's just, you know, cr you know, I take that back. I don't I I, I, yeah. I have mild sympathy for her, yeah. but not for her actions. I, I will say this is one of the geniuses. This is, you know, we're talking about our love for, for Jean Triplehorn. And one of them, I thought, was that in that moment that you're talking about where she's, so she's in a hotel room with, and she like stubs, she basically breaks her toe. Mm -hmm. And she, she breaks her toe and she. I don't think she's like her toe. Reacting. She looked like she broke I me. Mean, she was like she was bitching like she broke her toe. But I would bitch that hard if I stubbed my toe. Probably, yeah. That's the thing. And she's just she's in a room. She's in pain. Mm -hmm. She possibly did break her toe. Maybe. Um, uh, as someone who's had a couple broken toes, very painful, very annoying. Mm -hmm. And like she, he is only concerned with her with like this is supposed to be their romantic weekend yep. and he's only concerned that she, he doesn't find out like 
And then she basically talks. She just, I was like, I was like, I had the same reaction that you had. I was like, she has she every right to, like for a moment there, I just mm -hmm. was like, she is utterly justified in all of her actions. And then, you know, I took a, a beat and I was like, she's not actually, no, she's not justified in any of her actions. However, she is in a really, really, really difficult situation. And I, I really, I, I was there. I was, I was in her world and it made sense. Well, which is kind of an art because she was, she's insane. I don't, I don't, like condone a lot of it but i don't think she also signed up for i'm going to keep this secret from you it's like no i'm going to have this relationship with you what you have going on that has nothing to do with us i don't care yeah and it's not my responsibility really well yeah so if i stub not my toe my i'm gonna screen some things exactly and if you're on the phone with your girlfriend and you don't want me to talk i think that's the kind of thing you let a person know before you call yeah exactly yeah yeah no you're right you're right it doesn't justify like kind of her cruelty but it does just like yeah, if she's if they're having this like fun affair, it's true. That's your problem. Mm -hmm. It's not my problem yeah. that you don't want to tell your girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway. if anything, she she needs a better guy. She does. Yes, she does. She's some you know yep. issues to work through. Get off the Jerry train, as yes. she uh, yes. Just, get off. She cashed. Just, just, she cashed. She cashed her ticket. Yep. Yep. So, well. So mm -hmm. yeah, so those are my those are my questions. Oh, that's good. Okay, Cause, yeah, because I only gave you two. I know I have more, <laughs> but you know, I can't ask well, them. I, you know, let's yeah. actually think about you know the next, next part of it. Yeah, mm? the next thing. No, no, I am. See, I'm, I'm waiting for you to prompt me. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you out of practice? Well, usually. Okay. Um. Yeah. So, what do you think happens next? I don't know. Why don't you tell me? <laughs> See good. how I just turned it right back on you. Um, so I have to say that I found this completely confusing. Which part? Um, How about this? The ending. Oh, the ending. Okay. So, well, let's, let's just go. Oh, wait, no, wait. You asked me what happens next. So do you mean, when did they fall in love? Oh, I'm sorry. I did do it though, out of order. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. When did they fall in love, Miss Diana? Oh, okay. We're starting over. When did they fall in love? Um, well, I'm going to ask you plain enough. <laughs> <laughs> no. You can. Okay. Well, no, here's the deal. What I thought was kind of interesting when I was truly paying attention, I loved, okay, so it's a rom-com, so there has to be a misunderstanding. So James is caught in the scenario where he's visiting his mother. Uh, Helen finds out she's pregnant, so she goes to talk to him, ask um, him his people at work where he is, and they're just like, oh, he's at the hospital with his wife. So she's been cheated on before. She it becomes very distraught, and she goes to the hospital, sees him um, with another woman. Eventually, it gets to the point where he tries to find her, can't. Anna, the best friend, says, you know, you know, she saw she saw you with her wife, and he's just like, oh my god. So he goes to all the places, and then he sees her at the bridge because there was a very special moment where she talks about when she needs to think she's on the bridge. You know, all the rom rom com, mm -hmm. always check marks. Yeah, and there's rain, like pouring, the, pouring the rain, the pouring rain scenario. So back to the pouring rain scenario, he runs to her, he talks to her, and she has this like fit of just like no i've had enough and i'm tired of this and and you lied to me and so she runs off and he just what i think is fantastic is that he doesn't make this whole like no no you have to understand but instead he just goes um this is what happened my mother is sick uh the woman you saw me with that she was my wife but we're separated and she is a good woman because my mother is in the hospital she we don't think she could handle the fact that we're getting divorced. So she's putting up the pretense for the sake of her health. And so it's, mm. it sounds so classic, nice guy. And even says, you know, I wanted to tell you, I don't know why I didn't tell you. And I could even jump back and say a couple scenarios. Like it was all very basic in the beginning. So that, mm -hmm. that's more like a, a fifth date conversation. I would assume not mm -hmm. like we've had sex twice. I need to tell you about my, my, uh, my sick mother and my, <laughs> And well, my ex I kind of feel like the sick mother is probably worth mentioning. Well, he he has mentioned his sick mother before. Oh, that's true. Yeah, so so, so she's aware of it, but at the same time, like yeah, on the, vacation, the, the wife, yeah, it's yeah, of, it's just it's just kind of you know. Again, there is this uh you know Dan Savage's podcast. You know, there's just good judgment calls where yeah, you know, if you lay this out on a person on a fourth date or yeah, something like that, totally. that could it's just be like, like too much, uh, too soon, too much, yeah, but. 
But again, I'm defending the man like crazy. And I'm yeah. walking into this movie, know how it ends. And I'm just like, no, everything he does is honorable. I, I feel like after the sex, I feel like he should have told. Well, like on the note that he left her? Because no, I don't know. Like in person. I don't know. Again, when do you? So they were they were with friends. Oh, hey, I want to tell you about something. So it. it okay. Again, yeah. There wasn't a time. For the convenience kind of, of um, an obstacle. Yeah. Of course, exactly. he didn't tell her. So. Um, there had to be something right right so what i think is great is that he ends it with just like you know if if you don't want to be with you know if there's a reason for us to not be together okay but from the way i see it there is no reason Mm -hmm. and i'm like yeah it's really the case and she even says if that's the truth and he says yes Mm -hmm. so it's just you know such a great moment but what i thought the moment for him when it comes to their relationship is there's this part where they see each other after he was giving her some space when her ex came to uh, an evening that she was doing the PR for. Um, he got tickets to it somehow because he knew a waiter. And so he kind of floors her and she's very upset, but he decides to step back, give her space, doesn't really tell her he's back in town. And so they see each other again and they're both so excited to be together again mm. in person and you even see the cute little thing where he calls and then hangs up really mm-hmm. quickly and she does the hangs up really quickly it's all just it's very 16 year old me is yeah i wish i had a phone number to hang up really quickly on there but you know whatever so there's this part where he says i gotta go see my mom at the hospital and she genuinely asks do you want me to come with you and he mm-hmm. smiles, mm-hmm. and he, I, I think that's his moment for him. He smiles, he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah I would pause, actually. Oh, and then, man. and that's the part where, you know, yeah, his, hey, mom, here's my girlfriend. And also, here's my wife I'm still with. Um, yeah, that's going to be awkward. It's awkward. So, like, it's that, that, the realization that he just, he, something that he wanted so badly is now just slowly kind of being taken mm. away from him because of the circumstances oh my god oh mm. that's so much better than mine well then share me yours well okay well that's him and i'm gonna th- i'm gonna say when she was back in place and when he mm-hmm. admitted that he was he admitted at first that mm-hmm. he would call and then hang up because he yeah, actually said like I, it's not I, like i didn't call i you. didn't call you well i i didn't no uh, i i haven't called you i've just you know so childish you know i dial your number then hang up really quickly and when he says that that's her moment because she's just like he's in this like i'm in this so i feel like with her um there were kind of two moments and one of them i guess isn't really a moment um it's uh it's like basically he starts telling her she he basically convinces her to do so like be uh, to open her own pr agency Hmm. And I think, like, maybe why I'm really drawn to that is because I feel like he, um, he opened, he, like, there's something about being in love, I think, that makes you feel like anything is possible. Mm. And so suddenly everything feels possible, that this person is, like, sees something in me that I don't even see in myself. Mm -hmm sees a whole life within me and I want to feel that I think that she really realizes that she feels that way when she's at work and like writing his name on the on her calendar like you said or Mm -hmm. like uh but I really think she just suddenly is like oh my god I like I anything is possible with this guy Mm. even things that just seemed crazy to me Mm -hmm. are possible like um, and then I think for him, though, I like yours so much better. Um, I think that. Well, I've been he, thinking about it since I was 16. That's true. You have a leg up on me. I only started watching this movie. On oh, wait, Tuesday. no. I've been thinking about this for uh, three days. <laughs> <laughs> um, is I feel like actually it was that day. Uh, I think he he I think he like. Had it was infatuated with the minute he saw her. Right. Hmm. Uh, when he like on the earring? train on the no, like I think on the train. I mean, oh. I think obviously the earring like, oh, my God, here's this really pretty girl. But. Or woman, but she like I think that in a way it's it's that whole day with crew. 
um, where, you know, like when he, he basically rode and then afterwards they were at a pub mm-hmm. and they're just having so much fun and she fits so well into his circle. Like, I think that they see that they can have this like life, you know, like he just is like, here's this creature that makes, you know, sort of my world more even you know fits in my world and also is like makes everything so fun mm-hmm. and like laughs you know laughs at all my jokes but is like clearly really smart and then you know she like says something to um you know like about the um about the restaurant and he's like super proud like oh my god you know mm-hmm. yeah yeah she's like kind of a big deal she's kind of a rock star isn't she yeah and i think it's that like i have i think that that took it from oh my god here's this really great here's this really great woman to like oh my god i really need to have her in my life Mm. i kind of like yours better though so i'm just gonna say i also like that when he invited out to things with friends exactly he would you know sit away from her so she yes. would be able to be part of the group instead of like just, you know, just like, like arm candy yeah 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 i mean yeah, I she like could that. be both but they were far yeah. away from each other yeah <laughs> i mean she was the only like woman in the group so yeah. I, I wasn't even paying attention yeah. to that so okay um so you said you were confused by the ending and does that have a, a hindrance on what happens next conversation um, no i just am like I'm like, I'm going to assume that we're going to talk about the what happens next for the sad sack scenario, because we know what happens when uh, in the like Mm -hmm. in the, you know, great haircut scenario. Well, if you remember correctly, um, because she passes away in the great haircut. Yeah, she dies in the blonde short haircut scenario Mm -hmm. uh, where she and James were going to get married. He said so to the doctor. It was really sweet. I know. Although I don't know how the UK medical system works in terms of like HIPAA laws. Also, Mm. I don't think HIPAA existed in the in the 90s i think oh that's it more... did oh, oh of course how about this we don't hear about it as much maybe as yes. we do now um but in terms of just like also when you're 15 frankly your your interaction with the medical system can also be you know at well, a remove well the first question was like because they're running parallel because she gets injured in both ones you know are her are you her husband um well we were going to get married and she's like, oh, okay, so I'll still tell you information. And then on the other side, yeah. you know, you know, you know. And I don't know what the, U- I mean, UK yep. laws are. Probably obviously. similar to the smoking in bars law of the 90s, because I'm watching her do it. And I'm just like, oh, I, I remember all those. Oh, my God, you like never, you, I mean, you don't spend a lot of time in bars in general. But mm-hmm. like, I forgot that you, your adult life has been spent in uh, blissfully, uh, uh, cigarette free bars. It uh, must be. Are we, so I. In California. Well, because yeah. I mean, I worked in a bar for years I, with like well, still re- with the smoke. Sure. Well, I remember the campaigns of not smoking in restaurants. Yeah. And, and I trying mean, to get those things passed. when I was a kid, mm-hmm. like we, I mean, actually, even I mean, after those were passed, like sure. in on the East Coast, you still there were still no smoke. There were still smoking sections. Yeah. In restaurants. Yeah. No, which I, is like outrageous to me now. Well, no, I remember them when I was yeah, younger. Okay. But again, this was traveling to Nevada. Yeah. Type of thing. Yeah. So, yeah um yeah this was like tuesday (laughs) so again unclear and all this other stuff so she she um when she's with james there's this really sad moment where she conveniently passes away as he's crying and talking about how much he loves her and he's gonna make her happy how he's gonna make her so happy and in turn she wakes up in the brown hair scenario and if you remember throughout the movie there was this this sound of just like yeah 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 in each one where it's like the the parallels of the stories were coming together like she has kind of a fainting spell at the same moment of Mm -hmm. both scenarios and the timelines um and and it's you know you're you're supposed to see that they're together but they're not yeah in, in some sort of way so are you having an issue with she has a memory of it they both do and you don't buy it or i think you know where i think it's the confusion maybe comes to me that i'm I'm like, am I supposed to just enjoy the conceit or am I supposed to that she's take dead? away? No, no. The conceit that like there are these two parallel lives and I'm just supposed to enjoy the sort of like the unfolding of said lives or am I supposed to take something more from, uh, 
am I supposed to analyze like, you know, the nature of fate? Like, mm -hmm. I think that's where I'm. Well, we don't have much more time left in the episode. Yeah, so, I'm so gonna let's say not no. let's not do that. Well, also, um, but that was my takeaway from the movie. Is I'm like, how much am I supposed to think about this? But I've just decided to enjoy it. Okay. Okay. So, okay. but 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 to answer your the question, yes, my question, do you have an answer? Of, of of if they end up so I'm gonna assume that uh, we're talking about the um, the long uh, brown hair scenario. Well, that's or the all there lob, is for a future lob. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, I think they. Uh, I actually am gonna give them like a go. I mean, they. I I think that she. I mean, she's meeting him at a time where she's ready to kind of you know she's broken up like she's ready for that yes. she's ready for all that to start and i think that he is clear clearly a very very thoughtful mm -hmm. and very caring individual they uh they're both ambitious mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i feel like you know all of the all of the ingredients are there for them to have like a really nice pleasant like a really nice life together i think they like making each other laugh they both like um you know i think that they both care about some of the same things they care about you know family and friends like i'm gonna say they like they make a go of it these crazy kids interesting yeah okay um i'm going to act out what yes. happens after the credits started and, okay and the elevator closed um so Actually, no, I'm not. Take that back. <laughs> <laughs> I teed myself up for something Damn. and I wussed out. <laughs> oh. No, what's going to happen is. I was so excited. So, in that scenario, she drops her earring again. He hands it back to her, a la the first time they met in both timelines because it mm -hmm. hadn't split yet. And so he sees her sad face. Damn it, we're about to, about to sad sack again. Mm -hmm. And he goes, you know, hey, you know, cheer up, you know, what the Money Python boys say. And. I thought the original back in the day when she comes back with nobody expects the Spanish, uh, Spanish Inquisition. Oh, I butchered it. Mm -hmm. um, they look at each other like, oh, they remember, they remember. Mm -hmm. But if anything, when he says it to her originally in the in the split timelines, she actually responded with always no, look on the bright, bright side, side of life. life. Would and so she knows some Monty Python. So if anything, the fact that she quoted that, I think it's just that's going to be their opening scenario, not because they remember their timelines, but if anything, it's just like that just kind of f came out of her mouth mm -hmm. because why not? Yeah. And it's a great like it's a much better mm -hmm. it's a because he doesn't know like at the time he knows mm -hmm. that she's having a horrible day. Like when they first have that conversation. Well, anyone coming out of a hospital is, you know, yeah. you have really, really good No, but I mean the odd. first time. Well, oh, no, I'm talking about this yeah. instance. Yeah. Oh, yeah, in, in, the, in, the, in the... On the train. On, on the, the two. On the train. Because she's just like, I've had a horrible day, and I just want to read my book. Yeah, yeah. But, but in this instance, what I'm thinking is the fact that they do that, they're able to have a laugh together. Mm -hmm. The fact that that's just what popped into her head, or that's what she decided to And he's to like, quote. oh, my God, this is the woman for me. This is my line. Well... That's what I got. What's going to help is that it's going to start that conversation. Um, he's not going to be too invasive because they're coming out of a hospital. So they kind of like have to sidestep it. So he'll start with, you know, oh, I'm just visiting my mom and he just got really good news. But at the same time, I'm wondering if the good news means he can't, you know, has to still be divorced, mm. but, you know, in quiet and everything like that. But, oh, God. But yeah. again, he's going to be smart. He's going to be smarter. He's going to be smarter. He's going to be smarter about that, but he's also going to let her decide to open up if she wants to or not, and she's going to be very shy about it. But the fact that he was very cautious with her before and it still worked mm -hmm. out, I'm going to give them a thumbs up. Yay! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, he's going to be just as cautious. And, yep. And, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. And if anything, it might still happen where she's going to be living with her friend. He's going to delicately pursue her. Um, and she's going to get a haircut. She's going to start her own PR firm. Mm -hmm. It's just a delayed time frame, and having a, f you know, later scenario with unfortunate consequences of miscarriages involved. Yeah, that's um, sad. Yeah, the, uh, I think they're not going to have children. You think they're not going to have children? I think that's going to be the. Yeah, mm. I think this is not going to be the only mm. one. Oh. Sadly, but I do think they're going to like be okay with it and just be like, "Well, this is our lives. Like, we're going to be lovely." Aunts and uncles. Is that going to be the sequel? They're going to be 
this is the scenario where they do have children. Yeah, this is the scenario that would be actually fantastic. This is, yeah, the adult movie. <laughs> You're like, oh. Yeah, I was kind of fascinated by these sliding doors and like, like, like she chooses a different career path. Like I sort of feel like this should be a series and it should be like. It's possible. Like she gets a different job. <laughs> Always there. Always anyway. possible. Well, there it is. There it is. All right. I enjoyed that. Cool. I'm so glad. thank you for letting me not no longer have the constant conversation of sliding doors. And I'm like, oh, I never saw it. And people go, really? Does so that now it's over. Does that happen a lot? I feel like Sliding Doors is one of those movies people are surprised. I'm surprised I didn't see it. My husband was surprised he didn't see it. Like, like it's just one of those movies that, like, everyone, I don't know, seems to have seen. So. Well, the, the, the scenario behind it makes sense. Like, turns out there's a movie about it. Yeah. Why not? Yes. Yes. All, All right. right. Cool. So a couple of things that I mm -hmm. think are important. Okay. Um, so for when we get started... Um, with our next episode mm -hmm. we're going to be walking into another theme month Ooh. this is jude lie oh, i love it and we're going to be jude Lai. watching the movies of jude law mm -hmm. and uh for our next episode we're going to be talking about the talented mr ripley oh, which i'm very such a, happy about 1999 yeah, I am too. very excited about and we will be joined by special guest Meg from the Indoors Women. Which makes me almost more excited. I don't know if you remember um, our last podcast uh, episode with her mm -hmm. um, where we talked about another Jude Law movie. Yes. Um, it was So uh, that was super fun, and I'm really excited to do it again. I'm very And to talk about more Jude Law. I'm very happy that she's going to be back. Yeah, me too. Awesome. Okay, so um, I also um, gave Polina this little hint here. Okay, so okay. we got mail. We did. We got some mail. We got mail. And the thing is, it <gasps> oh was God, addressed to envelope. me. So I opened it because I knew who it was from, but I didn't know what the hell was happening. Okay. But it's very exciting. Don't be scared. I'm not scared. Yeah, I'm so, excited. So so here is a present because it's like very, very, you know, here, you get oh. to unwrap the rest of it. So, yes. Okay. okay. Uh huh. Oh, wow. That's a crazy sound. Good sound effects. Good uh, job. Yeah. Yep. I should have done it faster. Uh huh. All right. Easy now. I know. Here. Okay. Yep. Don't Can break do the equipment. Holy S. There's no S. <gasps> Hold on. Calm yourself and be also descriptive to the, oh to my the God. people listening. Oh my God. So this is from my brother, Patrick, a.k.a. Wow. Awesome he mate. Yeah. I tell the listeners. I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm speechless. Okay. So there are three stills from Better Off Dead, and they're all signed by Diane Franklin. Yes, they are. I think it's really cool. Who played Monique. I think it's great that she writes that in her, and I'm just like, we I'm going to read them all to you. We know who you are. I, I'm sorry. I, I know that I, I couldn't. I was just too shocked. Okay, so one says to Polina and happily ever aftermath. I like, whoa, she like knows it. She's, it says turn um, <laughs> <laughs> three exclamation points. A heart better off dead. Diane Franklin Monique. Then she writes best of luck with heme cast. Diane Franklin and oh, I can't read this. Uh, Monique. Yeah, the bod, and then to Diana. Remember in the inter Z Z international language Z E E, mm -hmm. Diane Frankel, Monique, better off dead. Uh, we didn't. We knew who you were. You, uh, <laughs> I, Patrick. I don't know how you did this. I do, but and you will tell me. <laughs> but I'm just need a moment before like the mystery. Just feels like it just dropped in the center of the universe. This is. So delightful mm -hmm. and makes me so happy. And I just thank you so much, Patrick, for doing this. And thank you so much, uh, Diane. You are amazing. And you are like, you are so gorgeous. You're gorgeous now. Jesus. Uh, you need to, to tell me what you've done so I can I can do it. Start doing it. <laughs> um, thank you so much. It's like, yeah, I'm obviously speechless. I think that's, I don't need to say it. So how, what happened? This is amazing. Well, what happens next is that we frame them and then yes. we put them on walls. And uh, then, yes, we do. And then we just be happy. Oh my God, this is perfect. This may be the first picture I put up in my new apartment. Oh. Aww. I'm gonna go home and do it. I'm gonna knock off a picture of me and Ryan and just put this up yeah, instead. Well, I mean, come he on, knows. you know what he looks like. He knows. I know what I look like too. Yeah, but I is. love the ski one. This one's awesome. And you know, I, I, 
I, this is perfect. Turn. It's one of my favorite scenes. <laughs> Uh, okay, how did he do it? How did he do it? Oh, do um, we do we do we take a peek behind the curtain oh, or not? Well, I'll explain really quickly. Um, mm-hmm. so she was at a local, well, local to him, um, convention, and I actually retweeted it from the Hemecast uh, Twitter account, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Oh wow, that's not far from where I'm going to be," and so he went after work. <laughs> and she was there and also she had the coat she's actually writing a book about the coat for, that she wore from better off dead and he got to wear the coat oh my god it's really cool oh yeah, yeah. so he I, thank I, you so i got much. this in the mail i was just like what i actually thought it was going to be pictures of my niece to you know because yeah. I, I get them on occasion and i stick them on my fridge no no diane franklin <laughs> whoa would it be in bad taste to ask my brother to also send pictures of my niece because i what? yes <laughs> but, no it wouldn't it wouldn't it wouldn't it wouldn't i Aww. i actually really i enjoy pictures of your niece as well and this is where we say it you have like the best brother ever i have great siblings you really do you can't play favorites i know no no, no. you just have great siblings um I mostly interact with your brother, no, but I'm, very virtually. And I just, he, it just, it's, it's, it's a never ending font of delight. I had no idea it could be even more delightful. What the last text I sent to him, I'm pretty sure was the one that I said, no, no, no I talked to mom. She confirmed you're the favorite. <laughs> Deserves it. Yeah. Rest of the siblings, you better catch up. <laughs> so, I have no siblings. So I, I, I'm like, this is what I always imagine having an older brother. This is why I always wanted an older brother. And I always imagined this. This is what it would be like. And my parents kept trying to explain to me that that's not how older that brothers was work. not how older brothers work. You're not just going to get one. I mean, unless there's something. I mean, my father confused me by saying, like, maybe there's something I don't know. But there's also like you would need a space time continuum yes. scenario to get an older yeah, brother. Exactly. All right. Well, then. Oh, that was awesome. Wow. All right. Oh, my God. Well, I did mention that. We had tweeted something, and that's how he managed to find this out. So mm-hmm. if you follow us at Hemecast, yeah. H-E-A-M-C-A-S-T. You might also find out random things like Diane Franklin is appearing in your town. Yeah, and you will be delighted I, by, by this information. I, this is how it works. Also, we have really, really great you know, followers. So we like definitely. there's some great stuff in that feed. Uh-huh. I mean, th- there's also a great person tweeting things. There is an amazing person. One of my favorites. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. So there's that. Mm-hmm. And then we're also um, on Facebook at Happily mm-hmm. Ever Aftermath. And if you check out all this, any social medias, if you check out the hashtag Lady Pod Squad, oh my God. you'll find an amazing assortment of podcasts that you can find and you know the aforementioned meg indoors mm-hmm. women so much fun one of them i was listening to their podcast about the avengers movies it was mm-hmm. great mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i did their game of thrones wrap up mm. i haven't hit that yet that's it's a, that's some good times in your ear oh i know i can't wait now yeah so we're very excited to have her back yes that's it for All sliding right. doors thank you so much yes and remember don't open the door with your arm only move through the door if it is fully open that is not going to be the tagline of our podcast. No, it is not. But okay. I just, we need to remind people that's, sure. that's not what you do. Don't break public transportation. Do not break public transportation. All right. All right. Thank you. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.